everyone, it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I have a couple of cards to share with you featuring some of the newest products from Simon Says Stamp's September release. I'm super excited to share this card with you because I actually created this stamp set that you're going to see here in this video. This is the Arctic Christmas stamp set. I designed this stamp set with the thought of creating a scene that was already built for you. So all you had to do was color it in, kind of like the uh, coloring book trend that's really popular right now. But this is a stamp that you can go ahead and do water coloring with, Copic coloring, color pencils, any type of medium you want. You can go ahead and do that with this stamp. And this stamp can also be done horizontally or vertically. So here you can see it fits perfectly on a horizontal A2 size card. But you could also turn this so that way it's vertical. And I'll have an example of that later on in the video so that you can go ahead and see that. For this card that I'm going to be sharing with you, I'm going to be using the stamp horizontally. So I'm going to go ahead and prep my watercolor paper here. I'm going to use an EK Success powder tool to do that. You could use uh, anything from kitchen flour to an embossing buddy to all sorts of different types of things. Even a dryer sheet can do the trick. And basically what you want to do is you want to cut down on any static cling because we're going to do some heat embossing. So I'm going to go ahead and start stamping my image with some Simon Says Stamp Clear Ink. This ink I'm using because I'm going to be doing the heat embossing, so I need a clear sticky ink to go ahead and do that. You could also use Versamark ink if you have that one. That one works just as well. Now, after I've stamped the image, I'm going to go ahead and bring in some embossing powder here. This is the white embossing powder from Ranger. I'll go ahead and sprinkle this on top of my image to get it completely covered. And you can see that design starting to show up because, of course, with the clear embossing, it's a little tricky. And then once I heat set it, it's also going to be a little tricky to see because it's white embossing powder on a white piece of paper. So I am heating this up and melting the powder. And as I start coloring, you'll start to see the image unfold. And you'll really see how it comes together. So I'm going to go ahead and start the coloring. I did a bunch of water coloring here with my Zig Clean color markers. This took a very long time to color because I was doing such detailed coloring. However, you can simplify this a lot more by just doing some very simple shading on all of these critters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the music play and I will let you watch the coloring and when I come back I'll go ahead and show you how I did the sky and also then help you finish the rest of the card. If you're not interested in the coloring and you just want to see how I created the card, go ahead and fast forward to the annotation that I have listed here on the bottom of the screen and that'll go ahead and let you continue watching the building of the card and skip through the coloring.
Okay, so once we finish the coloring of the images, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in some blue here to start coloring in the sky for my scene. I'm starting off with a really light blue and I'm gonna go ahead and blend this out with my water brush. Now, as I color this, you're gonna start to see that the paper is gonna pill and that's because I used so much water, it was a little ridiculous. And I ended up having the paper starting to pill and of course then that wasn't letting my colors blend as much. So as I continue to color, you'll see that happening as we go along. But what I ended up doing was I was able to take that pilling to my advantage. And I'll show you how I did that in a second. But first I wanna talk about here what I'm doing with these gold watercolors. These are the Starry Nights watercolor set from Gonzai Tombi. And I'm gonna go ahead and add this onto the little garland that's going around the tree. And I'm using two different shades of gold. I'm using a lighter gold for the base coat and then I'm bringing in a slightly darker gold to do some shading. It's very simple and very subtle too, but it does add a little bit extra dimension to that garland. All right, so now we're moving back onto the sky. Here I'm bringing in a darker blue and I'm gonna go ahead and start blending this in. And then here's where I ended up having just too much water. I put a lot of water down when I blended out that first layer of sky. And now that I'm adding in more water and I'm adding quite a bit of it, you can see it's starting to pill the paper. And it's okay, I ended up with able to fix it and I'll show you how I did that. But first I'm gonna go ahead and blend this out, get the second layer filled in, and then I'll bring in another layer. This is the darker blue and I'm gonna go back over top of that area and you can already see the pilling that's happening on that paper. And as I'm coloring, I'm thinking, oh no, I just finished coloring this whole entire image and now I'm ru ruining the sky. And I'm thinking, oh no, what am I gonna do? But I never like to give up on something. It's one of those things for me is that I love to come up with a way to be able to salvage something I put a lot of work into. So you're gonna see me going back over top of this piece of paper multiple times with a lot of color, and I'm just trying to get those colors to blend a little bit more. And in the end, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm gonna end up taking here this purple and I'm gonna blend this into the sky and blend it down into the bottom portion of the sky. And it's just gonna help bring in some extra color and also kind of hide the uh, areas that weren't blending as well. So here's where I go ahead and take that uh, pilling to my advantage. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this paper fully. You can see that areas of paper where the paper is pilled and it's kind of clumping up in those areas. That's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this completely, get all of that fully dried. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my rag here, this is a dry rag, I'm gonna buff all those pilled areas off of the paper. And you can see it's kind of creating little spots, kind of like the water splatters. And I really think it turned out kind of cool. I'll end up taking some water here and I'm gonna flick on a bunch of water droplets to add extra texture to this background and kind of hide those little pilled areas. And in the end, this worked out perfectly fine. And I was really pleased that I was able to salvage this paper. And I did like how the uh, sky ended up blending together after adding all those layers. I just really should not have used so much water. I would have done a lot better and not had so much pilling in the end. But again, it worked out fine and I'm gonna go ahead and move on to creating the rest of the card. Now I wanted to add some stars to the sky and so I'm gonna go ahead and take some EK Success Powder tool again and I'll go ahead and make sure that I get any static off of this paper because we did so much water coloring on it and I don't want any wet areas to catch any of the embossing powder. I did dry it, like I said, but because we had so much water on this paper, I didn't want a chance having any damp spots on the paper that I couldn't feel, but the embossing powder would have picked up on. So I went ahead and heat embossed all those stars with gold embossing powder. I stamped the entire background with those stars. You just see I added a bunch of stars onto my block and I just randomly stamped them across the background. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some double-sided adhesive to the back side of this card base. And I'll go ahead and add a piece of fun foam on top of that. This is gonna help me pop it up off of my card base. And you can see my card base is actually inked. This was actually a white card base, but I needed something that matched the purple in the sky. I wanted a nice deep dark purple, but I didn't have any cardstock. So I cheated and I ended up making my own colored cardstock by doing a bunch of ink blending along the edges of this card base. I didn't bother going into the middle because I was gonna end up covering that up anyway. So I just went ahead and took my panel and popped that right up on top of that card base. And you'd never know that that was a white card base before I had added all that ink blending on top. It's a really great way to add in colors of cardstock that you don't actually have. All right, so now I'm gonna take a sentiment from that Arctic Christmas stamp set, and I'll go ahead and stamp this down right onto my little banner here. This is die cut from the stitched banner dies from Simon Says Stamp, and I just used some surf blue cardstock to go ahead and create my banner. I'm gonna go ahead and heat emboss this with some white embossing powder from Ranger. I'll just go ahead and heat that until the embossing powder is completely melted. 
I'm gonna go ahead and pop that banner up off of my card using some foam tape. This foam tape was actually half of an inch wide, but I needed something a little narrower because this banner is only about a quarter of an inch wide. I just trimmed that down into a smaller size and that worked perfect for going ahead and popping up this banner off of my card. For some sparkle and shine, I'm gonna go ahead and take my Spectrum Noir sparkle pen and I'm very carefully adding that sparkle pen onto the scene. I don't wanna add too much of it and bl blend too much because that'll start moving the water coloring underneath, but I added enough on there so that way it had a little bit of shimmer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my glossy accents and add that to the shiny areas for my little star and my ornaments. And I also added some Nouveau Crystal Drops in both the white for the snow in the background. And I also added some of the white blizzard color on top of the little snow-capped mountains over there. It added a really nice cool texture to those snow-capped mountains. So here's a close-up look of the finished card. Really, really fun. And I think this scene stamp really makes it so easy to create some really fun cards. Here's a look at the vertical version of this particular card. You can see how this totally changes the look of the image and you kind of almost don't even realize it's the same one. For this one, I ended up coloring it with Copic markers and I hope this gives you a nice representation of how you can actually use this scene stamp set to create some really fun cards, both in a horizontal and vertical format. Here's a close up look of that second card that I created and I'll have some details on how I created this card over at my blog, including the color combinations. I also used the new Believe die. This is the Believe Painted Word die from Simon's Stamp. They've have got a ton of painted word dies and I love them. And this one in particular worked great for this particular card. And then here's another close up look of our finished little scene card that we did here in this video. I hope this has given you some inspiration on using some of the newest products from Simon's Stamp. And please head on over to my blog where you can get more information on the Simon's Stamp release, more information on these cards, and also still pictures. Thanks so much for stopping by. Here's another video you might like featuring Simon Says Stamp exclusive products. Please give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you can connect with me on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, as well as my blog. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you again soon.